Alright, welcome back. Last time... Well, California's gone now, so... Even more wasteland is filled in as a result. Well, not all of it that I've hoped for. I mean, this one would have been great to have filled in, but... Yeah, there's next to no chance of that. At least not while... At least not without conquering the, these parts of Naval, Hosatani, and possibly also Farandina. I believe some of this stuff is, in fact... Never mind, it's part of Colonial Louisiana. Yay. I have also gotten a couple more provinces in England. It's not exactly the easiest to tell, because my shade of purple and England's shade of red are actually rather similar. Unless you look closely. From a distance, it can be a bit difficult to tell, but yeah. I'm slowly getting Scottish provinces. It's nice. In addition, I have enough money to embrace global trade. And it's probably going to arrive in the cap... not in the capital, but... In these provinces... and uh... This province, at least a bit... As soon as the preferred time to do so. So it's going to reduce in cost a little bit, but still. The addition to Tonak is about ready to be annexed. Which should cause the Mayan Pacific Coast name to disappear and for the Maya name to stretch, or at least attempt to stretch, from Panama to Alaska, to the Aleuts. So, that's going to be interesting. Alright, that's good. That's good and done with. Let's disassemble that army. I don't actually need it. Especially with seven cavalry. The ships? Um, split them off. Transports can go here. Definitely need to upgrade these. Ah, yes. So much kerning. <laughs> so much spacing between the letters. At some point I should also annex Colima, though. That one can take... That one can wait a bit longer. Especially since among other things, there's probably some things that could be... That could wait until later. This province keeps swapping back to Calvinist. I mean, I get that there's a lot, and I mean a lot of differences here, but... It's just annoying that constantly... Certain religions just gain over time no matter what. Wait, is this one hunting for pirates, or is this one pirating? Probably hunting for pirates. I don't know. I will say this, I've now got a much larger amount of dev under my belt. Although it will take time for this stuff to properly communicate. Like, this province is no longer going to have perfect communication. That's just impossible. So that's probably going to end up having or, well, not 100% perfect, just 94% or so, like this province has. I mean, they both have the same harborage and they're in the same sea zone. The only likely difference is probably going to be just pure distance difference. There's no easy way to really test that. Like, I get these two have different ones, possibly because of distance, but... They have different harbages as well. And while this has the same harbage as this, it's in a different season entirely. Actual numeric values is not something that I'm going to have available to me for this sort of a thing. Okay, okay, these two have the same. 
and there's a definite difference. Okay. So it really is pure distance. Nothing involving seasons. Okay. No assumptions or anything. Hunting pirates. Okay. I'm not sure about that for the moment. Once you're done, I don't know. Do something. Oh, no. Right. I probably should annex you at some point. Though it can perhaps wait. Or perhaps not. I'm not going to get a Diplo Idea group for a while. I plan on grabbing humanist ideas and then seeing if I can pick up a representative. That's a diplomatic idea, so... That will end up interesting. Does the cost produce? Perhaps I picked up some sort of thing that gives me a bonus uh, to vassal integration or something. Sovereignty, equipment drive, press policing, and centralize the state. Nope, nothing important here. Hmm, perhaps they're dev load. I don't know. But as time goes on, I might be able to surpass. Great Ming. And it's entirely possible, if I annex all of my subjects, if I can surpass France. The thing is, half their subjects' development is almost nothing. Whereas with Castile, it's well, 650. Their subjects in total have over 1,300 dead. Which, remember, this, is, this isn't population. Instead, it's pure economic power. So, total economic output. More or less, development is one of the best ways to measure GDP. <laughs> or the closest equivalent you can get to the early modern period, before such concepts even really exist. Well, as far as I know. When was the term GDP invented? Let's see here. First developed for a 1934 U.S. Congress report, and it, and it was and okay, so it was developed by someone named Simon Kutznets, and he warned against its use as a measure of welfare. Okay, and after the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944, GDP became the main tool for measuring a country's economy. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh! Oh, now that I think about Oh, whoops. Forgot about tech. Right, right, right. I better do that. So, embrace global trade. And that's all the institutions. There's not going to be a problem anymore. Plus, once it has that time to update the rankings, I'll be rank 3. So that will give me even more power projection. That's really the main thing the ranking system gives. Extra power projection. At least it gets me more prestige and legitimacy. Though more in the way of prestige rather than legitimacy. Still, a very high prestige is going to be extremely helpful. And it's actually pretty consistent, I have to admit. At least with how high it is. Anyway. Uh, nothing additional. Okay, that's good to see. Commission of National Education. Production and efficiency plus... Urban production efficiency plus 1%. Clearing houses. Global ship trade power plus 3%. Trade range plus 160. Trade efficiency plus 1%. Gunpowder commission. Siege ability plus 5%. Artillery fire plus 1. Heck. 
The amount of trade range I have, I can reach Central Asia. <laughs> I can basically reach every node in the world if I so choose. Okay, good. Well, if I can see it. There's a couple that I can't actually see, most notably uh, the Australian node as well as inland African nodes. But I can see all of Europe, for example, and I guess the important bits of Siberia. Hmm. It's just some leftovers that I still can't see. But it's fine. It's not really a problem. Yeah, okay, I did forget about that. Though it probably should be fine. I doubt it's going to go to... Okay, it's only seven viewers, just like the previous performance in this category. Whew. Gentry aren't going to like this, but... When have I cared whether or not the Gentry will like something? Not recently, anyway. Uh, we'll give them that just to make them a bit happier. Alright, enact reforms. This will make my military even more effective by uh, increasing... Increasing movement speed, manpower recovery speed, army professional, and reducing land attrition. Although the army professionalism one, I don't exactly know what that means because that's a number you should give to an effect. To a direct effect rather than anything else. Like an event or something. A temporary effect. Just something like a permanent change? Unless it just jumps it up by, you know, 5% when I change the reform. Which isn't that unreasonable of a thought, now that I think about it. Hmm. Alright, this is probably a good point to stop. Even if rebel hunting hasn't finished quite yet. But this is basically a constant thing that's going to be happening for a long, long while. It's not something that's just going to stop. Though thankfully the cores are approaching completion. The first one will be done uh, in August of this year, and the, next, and the rest will be, well, a good bit later in April of next year. Of course, in Louisiana and separatists are seventy-five percent. Yeah, though that's probably because I have not refreshed the grain door at all. I really should do that more often. Anyway, so um, the reason why stability is down is because I went ahead and did bureaucratic, well. Went for bureaucratic administration, which is military organization reform, rank 5. After that is rank 6, which requires even less gentry power. Thankfully, it's been going down until recently. Though that is likely due to... Where is it? Royal Consort, which is increasing it by 0.25% per year. And I would have mentioned something about something else, but it doesn't appear that's actually a present. Either that or it just expired. Hmm. I guess some of the old things that they like are no longer available for one reason or another. Which isn't good, because that means it's going to be more difficult to make them happy. Anyway, new air, 343. Not the greatest, but... I'll take what I can get. Uh, I just hope I get a 444 at some point so I can free the peasantry for real. Instead of promising to do it and then having the ruler die or always have something better to do beforehand. <sighs> okay. 
Uh, nothing I can do here. The clergy, I can probably... No, no, right. Performing a show of devotion. I remember seeing that on the list of things that are... currently going on. Provincial corruption is going down. State corruption is going up. Property is doing okay. And I've annexed Totona, so now my name stretches like this. Not the most satisfying, but it gets the job done. I will. Pl I am planning on annexing Colima at some point, and Tlaxcala is basically guaranteed to happen eventually. They're not particularly useful, insofar as beyond the fact that their military is actually pretty large. So they'll be nice for small-scale targets like the Valasatani or. I guess Arcadia? Yeah. Anything more than 10k, I'm not too enthused on letting them try to do anything. Alright, I could also. Publix. Huh. Anyway, I'm not too keen on doing that. If I remember correctly, yeah, there's nothing here. So, yeah. I had not much has happened, really. I've mainly been focusing on expanding the reach of, well, the auto investor, for lack of a better term. Yeah, expanding the reach of the auto investor to encompass more provinces. Checking up on economic health of certain provinces. For example, some provinces do even have a forestry-related industry, so I just plopped a game industry on them. Which is doing admirably. I will say that. That's good. Heck, this province didn't have a farmland's industry. So that's... Heck. All it had was sea salt to its name, and some fishing. Which, yeah. At the very least, it's doing better now. That's very good. Very, very good. Specifically because crop industry has a general tendency of being rather valuable. Yeah, game industry is barely break even, as the crop industry is making a heck of a lot of money. Hopefully things will improve further in there. What with increasing productivity, which will happen with time, I mean, and probably reforms. I've just got one level left in, well, outside of government administration, all the nobility reforms. Plus, once I've given the burgers a bit more influence, which... Not sure when I'll do that. I... Uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, it's going to get me more money, for sure. The burgers will like it, for sure. Problem is, is it worth taking the time to increase their influence when I could also be using that influence for other things? Specifically ensuring that the bureaucrats are the top faction at all times, because that's something I like having. Specifically because it helps my legitimacy gain. Anyway, I've also managed to reach rank 3 now. I'm actually pretty close to reaching rank 2. If I were to annex all of my subjects, I would gain enough development to surpass France. Of course, it's assuming they don't annex their own subjects. But considering their only subjects are uh, the various French colonies left over, specifically Colombia and the Pacific Islands, it's not really a problem. Also interesting is that... Huh... The various Aragonian colonies are all getting their independence supported from elsewhere. Farandina, however, seems to be the only one... Okay. Navalo Asatani is, for some reason, not particularly interested in revolting. The rest? Yes. Hmm, that's interesting. But it's not something that I can use as a native nation. I'd ra much rather annex them outright, rather than have them become independent. 
There were a lot of his... There were a lot of trouble, more or less. Oh, so France is at war again. Which might... Might turn out something good. At the very least, Bono seems to be doing well. They're a small country that's only barely holding on, but they are s capable of sieging down multiple provinces. If they're lucky, France won't be able to take the time to actually send troops over. <laughs> I find that unlikely. But if they're lucky, they might actually win. Or at the very least, if I'm lucky, They'll be giving France a hard enough time for them to not intervene and me invading their colony. Their last remaining colony in North America. Now that would be great. Anyway. Oh, I have also embraced global trade. Did I forget to mention that? Because I have actually done. It's still going to take forever for it to spread, though, not least of which because commercialization takes a long time to spread. Okay, I'm having trouble clicking nationalism. At the very least, it seems Colombian imports has reached the entire world. Legalism is... Yeah, that, for that, that's mostly true. There are a couple places that don't have it, but they're all getting spread, as far as I can tell. Outside of maybe a couple. This one all the way out here. I guess the tribes are just too strong. Okay, I've gone on long enough. I'll see you again next time. Until then.